So we get a question a lot. We've talked about China. It's one of the largest absolute weights and, and relative overweights in the portfolio. India is another area in the portfolio where there's this significant exposure. And I have both the macro question, the country question, but I also want to tie this back to the holdings and how the portfolio is positioned. So um, we hear a lot about the potential, the, you know, the growth in India, the long-term growth opportunity, and that India is, in fact, the next China. I know you have a very differing point of view on that. Can you talk about you know, kind of compare and contrast the, the two countries, but why you don't think India will be the next China, and really what if, you know, if the long-term growth opportunity is a little challenged there, how is the portfolio position? I know you invest in exceptional companies, but I'd like to kind of dive into that a little deeper. So when I say India is not the next China, there is no next China. I think that's a, a very good, there will be no other country that develops as rapidly as China mm -hmm. does on the scale that China has. India, of course, is approximate neighbor um, of China. It has relatively the same population. It's an economy of about $2 trillion. China is an economy between 10 and $11 trillion. So five times larger than India. So mathematically, is it possible that India actually outgrows um, China? It is possible in terms of growth levels off of a much lower base. You know, if China if the leaders are de so determined to keep growth at 6%, what they can, mm -hmm. or whether it's appropriate or not is another issue, but whether they, if they do, is it possible that India could grow faster than that? They certainly did last year. But when you look at you know 7% growth in an Indian context on an economy of $2 trillion, that's $140 billion. When you're looking at 6% on the base of $11 trillion, you know, that's 660 billion dollars, four times, the, the three, four times as, as fast. So, you know, we don't get bothered about the numbers, but what is really important is what are the opportunities within that growth that are investable for us and where are there opportunities that are defendable? You know, we're not just growth junkies to be um, growth investors. We want sustainable growth. We want circumstances where companies have defendable growth and they have a whole host of options um, to c extend their advantages into new segments, oftentimes through innovation. In the context of what we own in India, it's roughly half-half between the domestic economy and, and exporters. And half-half meaning, you know, we have at the moment 13, 14 percent of the fund, uh, roughly in, yep. in a India. Little, a little bit less, but yeah. So let's, uh, roughly half of that um, is in IT uh, exporters, so that's our very large holding in Infosys a smaller holding in, in Tata Consulting. And then we have sort of 250 basis points in Indian pharmaceuticals. So that's really half of the fund. That half of the fund is sort of, uh, you know, if you look at China, China is extremely competitive across many different industries as the world's largest exporter. In the case of India, one of the problems, of course, is because of infrastructure and policy, the only significant, you know, world-beating competition that or, or exporters that India has bred tend to not be those that employ tens of millions of individuals and kind of lift the country out of poverty. They tend to be actually on the high end of the value side, so mm -hmm. software and drugs. And so half of our fund is invested in those companies. And then the other half is concentrated in more India-centric businesses, the largest of which is our single largest holding, HDFC, the mortgage company that also is a conglomerate that has uh, a holding in India's largest bank by market capitalization, one of its leading private sector insurance companies. And then we have some smaller positions um, in Z, for example, which is a, a media company, where the revenues are sort of balanced, you know, three-fourths in India and a fourth exporting content. And then we've got much smaller holdings, things like Ultratech um, that are, are entirely about India.